So some of you may recognize this Dell server from when we tested the Unraid uh, streaming server with a virtual machine back in the day. We picked the server up actually from Dell, or not from Dell, from Toys R Us when they were going out of business. And we got them on the cheap. I got two of them, one for $400 and one for $450 or $500. I can't really remember right now. We got them really cheap and we ended up selling them both. Well, this one has come home and now that it's home and now that Unraid is updated to a new version, I think it's time that we retest the Unraid capture encoding streaming server uh, with the same server, but in a container versus a virtual machine. So that's what we're gonna do today. So last time this went pretty okay with the um, hardware that we had. And honestly, it wasn't anything too remarkable. It was about what you would expect. I thought it was, or could have been worthwhile, especially with you know, a graphics card or if you have enough CPU power um, like I did at the time. And I, well, I guess I technically still do on other servers anyway. Um, but we're gonna try it again with the pretty much same hardware, uh, but in container form and see if, if we get any kind of improvements and um, what kind of resource usage we get um, while it's all running. And yeah, that's all. That's all. That's what we're gonna do. That's the game plan. All right, so the Quadro P600 is installed. Um, now we just got to get this thing rack mounted again. And our Unraid's already installed on this. I've actually already been using it for some things, um, like testing purposes, really. And now we are going to use it to stream to YouTube and or Twitch. Probably YouTube first. There we go. Let's go get it racked. All right, let's just go ahead and slip it on in. Really need to get rails for this, like bad. If anybody wants to send me some rails, feel free to. Doubt that's gonna happen. I can conveniently fit back in here, which is awesome. It's actually pretty quiet in here from this side. I wonder if I should maybe think about doing some sound dampening on the door to make it quiet on the outside. Because when the Dell server starts running, it can get kind of loud, even with the fan profiles set to low. And by profiles, I mean the scripts that I created to keep the server quiet. All right, that looks good. What else? Oh, we need USB just in case. Ah, that's everything. We got the Dell server racked and that is all set up. I am already connected to it via the Unraid web UI. We're pretty much good to go from here. Now this isn't a guide, unfortunately, so if you do want to know how to do these or this entire setup, I would highly recommend checking out the link below to the blog where there's a full on guide, written guide, that you can follow step by step, step by step at your own pace in order to set this up if you're looking to do something similar at home with your Unraid server or just in general because it, I think it would be easy to replicate with pretty much any Linux distribution that allows you to have Docker Hub. Um, containers available to it or whatever. I don't know what I was trying to say. So let's go ahead and take a look at the configuration and see what you need to have at a bare minimum with an Unraid to make this work. Well, first things first, you will have to have the Community Apps plugin already installed. Um, that is not something that I'll show you how to do, but that is very easy to search and get done. But the most important thing here that you're gonna wanna know is that you'll need to enable additional search results from Docker Hub so we can find the OBS container that we actually need. So you'll set this to yes, you'll hit done, and then you're basically just gonna wanna search for Docker OBS NDI. And I already have the container installed, so it shows up here in my history. But what you're gonna wanna do at home if you don't have this container already installed is click here for more results. And that will show you the actual container that you need uh, for OBS NDI to install. So that's what all this, this junk is. Now, if we go back, or now the next thing we need is the NVIDIA driver. So thankfully that's also available in Community Apps. And I have this installed already as well, but you will need the NVIDIA driver from itch777's repository. I hope that's how you say that. And this is gonna give us the drivers that we need to pass through our graphics card to our container. So let's take a look at both. We'll go to plugins and NVIDIA driver. And you can see that I am using the latest driver 460.67. And 
And here is my uh, GPU key, which we're actually gonna need if we plan on passing through a graphics driver to the container. And in this case, we will. Uh, if you don't have a graphics card at home to pass through, that's fine. You can still do CPU encoding. Just know that it will use a lot of CPU th threads um, like it has in the past, or like I've shown in the past. So next up, if we go to the actual Docker uh, itself, we can edit this to see all of the changes I've made. Uh, a lot of these are actually pretty important. The first important change here is the web UI. We wanna make sure we have this um, set up so we can VNC into the um, Ubuntu container. And this will allow us to do that through the actual Firefox or Chrome, whatever, whatever browser you have. Uh, so I'll enable that. Now this is an extra parameter specifically for the NVIDIA drivers. We will be using NVIDIA, of course, so you have to have dash dash runtime equals NVIDIA. I think it's pretty important to set a network type here. So I have set a network type of bridge zero. So this will have its own LAN uh, available to the container. And I've given it a useful IP address. Obviously yours will probably be different, but this is the IP address I have assigned. Um, next up, that's important. We need to assign a VNC port to this container. So we've given this um, 5901, which is the default VNC port. And you know, I've just created a config type of port. I've given it a name, gave it the host port, and set a connection type of TCP. Pretty basic stuff. Now, the more difficult parts are for the NVIDIA GPU device and NVIDIA driver capabilities. So here, you know, I've given this the name of NVIDIA GPU device. Um, these will be all visible devices. And this is where you will enter in that GPU key that I mentioned earlier from the NVIDIA plugin. Um, you paste that in here, you basically make your configuration match this. And um, that is one of the last things you need to do before the container can actually use the graphics card. So here is the final configuration that we need. It's another variable. I've given it the name of NVIDIA driver capabilities. We have the key of all caps NVIDIA driver capabilities and a value of all. This is pretty important. So that way you can have things like CUDA and whatever fancy hardware features like maybe even InVenc that is included with your dri graphics driver and also your GPU. So all this is very important to have. And so we can have all those sweet capabilities. You could list them off individually if you didn't want to pass through CUDA or something. Uh, I don't know how to actually do that, so I'm just going to stick with the default value of all. And that is basically all you need to set for this um, at the most basic level. So let's go ahead and take a look at what happens when we launch this beast. So uh, we're going to click start because we want to start up our container. And this is actually pretty quick and uses almost no resources at all until you actually start streaming to it. So if I go to dashboard here, I can actually see the overall load right now is pretty minimal. I'm not sure what background tasks are going on to even give me this kind of usage, um, to be honest, because as you can see, there's only two containers, one of which is stopped and the other one which is running and really shouldn't be doing anything. So now we can access the web UI of the container itself. The password here is one, two, three, four, five, six. This is the default password that the creator has set. And right off the bat, we are given the Ubuntu desktop and we can go to Docker custom and we can see that OBS screencast or OBS is already installed for us, which is really cool. We could do the auto configuration wizard if we chose to. Um, in this case, I'm just not going to because it's not necessary. And because I've already passed through my uh, graphics card, we can actually go to output and we can see that I have both options for software and hardware encoding available. So let me just kind of play around with this just a little bit. And we are pretty much good to go from here. Um, all I would have to do is actually connect my other source and I think we'd be done. So let us do that. So our gaming computer is already set up to stream with NDI. And 
you'll see here, I, I've added the NDI source, so now all we need to do is actually select the gaming computer. In this case, I've named it Peasant Box. And it's very important we say allow hardware acceleration because this will actually um, give us the ability to use NVENC. If we don't set this, I believe it defaults back to CPU. And as we can see, so right now, I don't have any gameplay going on. This is a, a live feed from the webcam that is connected to the gaming rig. And it's pulled that in already uh, for us here. So that's pretty neat uh, that we've got that remote source over the network. And what's cool about this is that you don't need a capture card to um, do any transcoding with the second CP or second computer. You can just use your local network, not via Wi-Fi. This is all hardwired from one computer to the other. And so without a capture card, we can do this stuff and we could stream live right now. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like here in a second. Um, but we're pretty much good to go to stream to the internet. Um, so I think that's really all. Oh, actually, so we can do one more thing. We can verify that um, our NVIDIA graphics card is actually being used here. So there's this really neat command called watch, and this will basically repeat a command over and over every two seconds because NVIDIA SMI is a command that you run once and it just gives you some output but doesn't continue um, displaying anything. So the command that, the two commands we want are watch and NVIDIA-SMI. We hit enter here, and as you, you can see, the Quadro P600 is listed. So our graphics card is being seen. Right now we have no running processes found because the graphics card is not doing any encoding or transcoding at all. It's simply just sitting here waiting for a task. We can see that its temperature is 48 degrees Celsius and it's currently sitting at 39% utilization. I'm not entirely sure why. Oh, oh, actually, that's the fan. The fan's at 38%. Never mind. Okay, that's good. Um, so that's really all there is here. Now, what's really interesting right now is we're using about 18% of the CPU according to the Ubuntu container. If we switch back over to Unraid, we're using about a total of 25% of our CPU right now just sitting idle. Now, just for quick demonstration purposes, I'm gonna just go ahead and start recording, and that we'll see that our CPU has jumped up to about 28%. If we go back over to the watch NVIDIA SMI, we'll see that the no processes has disappeared. I think this may actually be a bug in the driver because it should show OBS here, and it does not. Um, if we, if you refer back to the past video, you would have seen that, in fact, OBS would appear here. But one thing we do see is that our um, temperature has risen to 50 degrees Celsius. So I think it would be safe to make the assumption that the Quadro P600 is in fact doing something. And if we sat here long enough, the temperature would rise well beyond 51 degrees Celsius. And we are using very, very little of, of our NVRAM. We're sitting at 79 megabytes, and I think that's about normal. If we flip back over to Unraid, we can see that we're not really using that much more CPU power um, or resources as we were initially. We jumped basically from 24% to 36%. And I think that's just because it's got to ingest all of that video over the network and that just happens via CPU with NDI, and but the actual transcoding is happening with watch, or I'm sorry, with NVIDIA here. So let's go ahead and stop this. And let's take a look at some actual recordings um, via the gaming computer and then as well as the um, stream. Let's go ahead and take a look at the video footage and remember that the gaming computer is a 5800X and a Titan X so it's a pretty overkill system so that's obviously going to look better in my opinion and then the server itself is a Intel 1230 V5 so it's four core eight threads. Um, pretty unremarkable by today's standards good but not great. It has 32 gigs of ECC RAM that's at 2133 megahertz so nothing spectacular there. And the GPU, of course, is the P, uh, P600. Um, so that should do a pretty decent job for encoding, but I think the quality might not be nearly as good as, obviously, the local machine. So first up on the list, of course, is the local machine. 
As you can see here, the video is very crisp. The frame rate is very solid. Uh, we're streaming Valheim, obviously. I don't know if that's obvious. We're, we're streaming Valheim, it's the new the, um, survival multiplayer game. And I think that looks pretty good. Next up is the GPU encoded stream. As you can see, it actually looks pretty okay. Um, it's not the best quality in the world by any means. I think it's, I think it's watchable, but I'm not 100% sure. I'll leave that up to you. Maybe if we had a different graphics card in there, that would look great or better. Now, finally, here is the CPU encoding, and I just did this one very shortly. Honestly, I don't see much of a difference between this and the hardware encoding from the G600, but I'll let you guys be the determining factor on that. And I'll put those side by side so you can get a better idea of what those look like. Uh, and so you can get, you know, your own, you can gauge your own opinions there. And well, all right. So if you have some extra horsepower laying around and you want to get into maybe some Twitch podcasting or streaming or YouTube gaming or YouTube anything, and your server has maybe a newer graphics card like a GTX 1060 that you've been using for Plex encoding and it really just sits idly when it's not doing encoding jobs for Plex or transcoding jobs for Plex, this might be a viable option for you because if you already have a secondary server, you can just literally pass through the graphics card to that container and you're pretty much off to the races from there when it comes to streaming to Twitch or YouTube or whatever your favorite service is. And you know, it comes right from the the gaming computer and then go straight over into the network room over there for me and it's all done locally via LAN. I would not trust it with Wi-Fi. I think there'd be too much interference there for a good connection. Um, but yeah, in my case, uh, I don't really need that obviously, but I think it's still cool to like show these things off. Uh, maybe in the future, I could take a look at this again if there's a lot of interest, but we can switch out graphics cards and do like a side by side by side with uh, several different graphics cards. And by several, I mean three or four, maybe four, three, three or four, whatever. And with all of that being said, I wanna thank you guys all for watching and supporting the channel and I will see you all next time. Cheers.